Hey guys, so I've made a few videos on quote unquote Wi Fi jammers, or to use the proper term, de authors. They're good fun and actually quite interesting. They'll kick everyone or specific people off a given Wi Fi network. If you want to find out how to make one yourself for under $5, see the links in the video description. Otherwise, in this video, I'm going to be looking at how they actually work and how they're different to real Wi Fi jammers. So let's get to it right after this. Malduino is the Arduino based bad USB. You can use it to inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper. To find out more, see the link in the video description. So Wi Fi jammers are actually quite different from Wi Fi deauthors. Though you'll probably have noticed in previous videos, I use the term jammer in titles to describe a deauthor. As the word deauthor doesn't really mean much to most people, though jammers and deauthors essentially both have the same effect. You can't use your Wi Fi. So a jammer is a device that essentially just tries to be the loudest voice in the room times 10. It'll transmit a load of nonsense on the same frequency as what it's trying to jam, thus rendering any communication between two legitimate devices fruitless. They just won't be able to hear each other. Kind of like someone playing Sonic Air Rape at max volume when you're just trying to watch your favorite anime. Not cool, guys. Jammers are pretty hard to come by. You can't really use a normal computer or Wi-Fi card as a jammer. You need specialist equipment, which will usually involve buying from a sketchy looking website. The authors are really quite different. They don't spew nonsense at all. They're not trying to get in the way just by being loud. Quite the opposite, really. So no Sanic here. A deauthor could be your laptop, a cheapo module like this, pretty much any Wi-Fi chip that supports packet injection. So no specialist equipment needed, just some software, really. So how do they work? Well, the authors take advantage of the fact that Wi-Fi in of itself is really badly designed. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's go back to basics. Why do we have passwords on our Wi-Fi? Well, so you can stop people from hitchhiking on your connection, right? Yes, but also to stop people from snooping on your data. An unencrypted network leaves all its data open to unscrupulous people to spy on. However, even if your Wi-Fi is secured with a password and therefore encrypted, only the data is encrypted. So your credit card's information may be secure, but there's something else to worry about. Management frames. Management frames are used to communicate basic tasks between a client and an access point. Management frames handle stuff like joining and leaving a network. The problem here is that management frames are almost never encrypted, even if you're using WPA2. So this allows for someone else on the outside, say for example, pesky cheapo Wi-Fi chip to send out a load of these management frames in particular, the authentication frames. These frames are used to terminate a connection. So you just send out a load of these deauth frames to the client, pretending to be the access point, and the client will just be like, oh, okay, and then disconnect. So deauthing, like I said, needs no specialist equipment, only a Wi-Fi chip capable of packet injection. There's a good chance the computer you're watching this on could perform a deauth attack with the right software and drivers. So deauthentication attacks are really a lot more targeted than jamming. Jamming essentially will just block everything within a given radius, whilst a deauth attack can be targeted to affect just a certain access point or even just an individual client on a certain access point. Now you're probably asking yourself, why don't we just encrypt the management frames? That'd solve everything, right? Yes, yes it would. And it's been done. It's called 802.11w. It even exists. It specifically protects the authentication frames. Perfect. But for some reason, no one seems to use it. And when I say no one, I mean manufacturers. The companies that make your router, phone, laptop just don't implement it for some unknown reason. The more expensive enterprise grade routers seem to sometimes support it. It's just us plebs that can't seem to get it. So at this point, I wanted to tell you how you yourself could avoid such a deauth attack. Unfortunately, you can't just run a piece of software to ignore the deauthentication frames as they work on layer two of the OSI model. Hence, you need to modify some really low level drivers to get that working, which is kind of out of the scope of this video. I then tried to search for 802.11w enabled routers and got nothing. So sorry guys, it seems like you're on your own on this one. If you want to find out how to make your own Wi-Fi deauthor out of either your laptop or a dedicated cheap device, see the links in the video description. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys. I'll probably be making another video on the topic, though covering the legality of such jammers and deauthors. So do subscribe so you don't miss that. Remember to like the video if you liked it. Follow me on the Twitters and the Instagrams and stay tuned for more hacking videos.